Hello everyone and welcome back to the mystery theory. Today it's going to be another soft spoken case featuring a case you guys requested. Now, this is still unsolved, so we will go through what happened and we'll also talk about the different scenarios and what could have happened. Before I get started, I'd like to ask you to remember to subscribe if you enjoy true crime and ASMR combined. Also, if you don't mind, leave a comment down below. That way, you will help spread around this video, help with the algorithm, share your thoughts, say hello, or simply leave uh, an emoji. I will have some friends in the background that I will try to edit out. But it is a pregnant mother who is looking for my attention. So let's hope she can keep it together while I try to share this case. If you're leaving a comment, thank you for taking the time. You're helping me a lot. And remember, it takes one second to click the like button. So thank you. Now, this case is one of the older cases I have requested in my long list of cases. And it's about Paula Jean Weldon. Now, Paula Jean was born on October 19th, 1928. But our case won't take place until she is already a sophomore in college. At the time, she was attending Bennington college in Vermont. She was majoring in art and was living in campus in her dorm in Dewey Hall. So, she not only was uh, busy, with school, but she also was working. She worked at the school cafeteria. Now, on Sunday, December 1st, 1946, she had 
to do double shift before going back to her dorm. You would think she was tired after school and double shift and that she was probably going to rest, but she decided to go on a walk. She told her roommate that she was going to a nearby trail called the Long Trail. She didn't say at what time she was planning to come back. The Long Trail is a 200 in 70 mile hiking route that goes from Vermont up to the Canadian border. Now that particular day it was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Paula was wearing a red parka with a fur trimmed hood and white sneakers, which was plenty warm for that day, but definitely not a great match for the cold of the night. The timeline I am going to share with you was not only the account of the roommate, but also different people that saw her that day. Some students mentioned seeing her leaving campus. Then Danny, who worked across the street from the college, saw her walking along Route 67A towards Bennington at around 2.30 p.m. At 2.45 p.m., a local contractor, Louise, spot her hitchhiking along that same road. So he took her as far as Route 9. Route 9 is about three miles from the long trail. At around 4 p.m., Ernest and three of his friends who were staying at Camp Bigford Hollow run into Paula, who asked them how far the trail went. Ernest told Paula that the trail went all the way to the Canadian border. Later, she was spotted in another camp further up the trail. It is winter and it's around 4 p.m. in Vermont and you think that it was starting to get dark. But she kept 
going north. After this, she was never seen again. Now, this is an interesting fact, I guess, but in um, all accounts, by all accounts, she was trying to get somewhere up north. So, from this timeline, I'm assuming, and of course, this is my opinion, that she was trying to get somewhere, not planning to walk back, to go back home. If you ever hiked, you know that one of the most important rules is to be ready, to have a good plan, and be back in time if you're not planning to spend the night. Paula had no um, backpacking gear with her, no tent, so we can safely assume that she wasn't planning to stay in the woods overnight. But where was she trying to go? And why would she walk this trail all of a sudden after doing two shifts at school for work? She was never seen again after that last encounter at Faye Fuller Camp. Her roommate didn't think anything of it because she typically went to the library to study late. But when she woke up the next morning and Paula was not there, she realized that something happened to her roommate and reported it to campus security who checked their log and if she would have come back after 11 p.m. She would have had to sign in. They look for her on campus, and when they couldn't find her, they notified her dad and also the authorities. Over the next two weeks, the search was massive. Police, firefighters, the National Guard, and even volunteers search for her everywhere. The college was shut down, so Students and staff could join the search if they wanted to. Even Connecticut police joined them with air support. Now, the area they were 
were searching was a ten mile stretch along the trail from Route 9 to Glastonbury Mountain, but only twenty feet on either side of the path because the land around it was almost inaccessible. They searched Mount Anthony because she had told somebody she wanted to visit and eventually a taxi driver came forward and said that he dropped off a girl matching Paula's description at the bus station on Sunday afternoon. She talked to the taxi driver, but she didn't say where she was headed. The time that she was dropped off there were three possible departures with destinations to Albany, Burlington, and New York City. They asked employees who were selling tickets that day, but nobody remembered seeing somebody that matched her description. Her picture was shared in all places and the surrounding areas, hoping that she might have taken a bus with any of those destinations. Eventually, a waitress at a diner in Fall River said she served somebody matching Paula's description, but she wasn't alone. She was with a man in his mid-twenties. He seemed drunk and abusive. The girl that matched Paula's description seemed very scared and she asked the server for directions to Bennington. At this point Police was looking into every lead, but couldn't find anything. Eventually, a hunter by the name Herman Spencer that knew the area very well offered to search along the trail. They believed that Paula got lost in the woods and wasn't wearing enough clothes to stay warm that night, so she eventually died. But if she did, where is her body? Is it possible that she encounter an animal? or maybe even a human. If you think about different scenarios, she could have been kidnapped. Maybe she could have fell and injured herself. Or maybe she went there 
to take her own life. But of course, even back then, police looked into her background and learned some stuff that most people didn't know about her. According to the closest to her, she was very unhappy and even depressed. She was so depressed that she didn't even go home to spend Thanksgiving weekend before her, the weekend before her disappearance. Some friends even went a bit further and said that she was fighting with her father. If we go just the day before she disappeared, all of a sudden, she was very happy. Uh, she was excited about something, which leads me, my personal opinion, to believe that she was anticipating something exciting happening. Possibly the next day. Was she meeting somebody? Or was she excited to leave her current life behind? Now, we must agree that if you are trying to stay um, out of sight or if you're trying to move and start a new life you'd still take a few things with you like cash credit card and possibly ID she was an adult and she was entitled to change her name start over. Now Paula didn't drive, she didn't have a car, and police covered public transportation and nobody had seen her. They looked into her life and realize that she didn't have a boyfriend or a significant other. Eventually, the search was called off on December 15th when the snow made it impossible to continue. The next May, there was another search party put together by her dad, but nothing came out of that. Her dad was not happy with the search or the investigation. How could his daughter vanish into thin air? I mean, she could have died of exposure with the cold temperatures and at that point that was making more and more sense but then we learned about Fred Cadet who was a lumberjack who lived in a cabin in the woods near the long trail when he was looked into, they found out that that Sunday, he had a fight with his girlfriend and left the cabin. 
nobody knows where he was for 24 hours and even when he was asked he gave conflicting stories now he did say that he saw Paula walking up the trail but he didn't talk to her because he was having a bad moment with his girlfriend and didn't feel like talking sadly there was no evidence nothing to hold him and pressure him or given enough time with the authorities to do investigate him but some years later the police received a tip when some bodies of him heard him say in a local bar that he knew where Paula's body was at when he was taken in for questioning he said that he was drunk and talking nonsense in police's eyes he was still the number one suspect but they had no proof now looking into this case and unsolved mysteries it's easy to find lots of theories and that's what I'm about to share with you apparently between the year 1920 and 1950 10 people disappeared in that same area their bodies were never found and that place was even called at the time the Bennington Triangle like the Bermuda Triangle some people recognize that area as a hot spot for UFO activity some others think that Bigfoot lives in the area and have, according to them, proof that that's true. But one of the things that locals can tell you is that strange lights appear in the dark skies at night. And weird noises come from the woods. To make things a little bit more creepy, Native Americans consider the mountain to be cursed and they avoided going through it at all costs. So Fred, the number one suspect, UFOs, Bigfoot, strange light and noises coming from the woods what do you think happened to Paula please if you're still here share it in the comments down below what do I think happened to Paula I think it's a little bit more sinister than UFOs or Bigfoot sightings. What makes sense in my head, and again, this is my opinion and not a fact, is that she probably met somebody. That's why she was excited the 
Saturday before, she seemed happier and that's why even though she was, she said she was going to walk the trail, she probably was going to with the idea of meeting with somebody along the trail. Could that be Fred? Could be. Maybe somebody else that she met while working at her college cafeteria. I honestly think that it makes a whole lot of sense when a young girl that is going through a hard time, possibly depression or unhappiness, it's faced with the possibility of meeting somebody who seems sweet, charming, and somebody that will take her away from all the craziness and all the unhappiness that she's living in. I think that if she would have planned to camp there, if she would have taken at least some hiking gear, if she would have thought about spending the night somewhere she would have taken she would have taken money she would have taken her ID her credit card debit card something <laughs> but she didn't I also think that Paula was possibly a little naive she couldn't be trafficked she could have been kidnapped but it really doesn't make a lot of sense to think of her as somebody who would venture into the woods with no plan I think she was extremely smart and she wouldn't have done that to herself. If you ever camp in the woods, you know that it's cold no matter what time of the year it is. With the humidity and the trees covering, especially if it was a rugged terrain, in the middle of winter (laughs) heck, even in the summer you can be pretty cold at night in the woods if you don't have the appropriate gear so if you ask me what happened to Paula I think she was chasing happiness and she encountered foul play The idea of her asking people how long the trail was, where it was heading, it just points to the direction that she never even learned about this long trail. And that she was going there for a reason. And I don't think it was to take her own life. In any case, this is an older case, so of course, 
they didn't have the same resources back then, police didn't. And um, you can only imagine or you begin to imagine the frustration of a father not understanding how it's possible for his daughter to vanish. So hey, that's that's our unsolved mystery for today. Please take a few seconds and let me know what you think about this case. Thank you so much for being here and I will talk to you guys in the next